It is late Sunday, July 7th, out across the Atlantic Basin, and all eyes are on this very strong tropical wave moving westward at 20 miles per hour out across the central Atlantic. The Hurricane Center is giving this feature a 70% chance of becoming an organized tropical depression or tropical storm within the next two days, and this is concerning considering that the storm is moving towards the west at 20 miles per hour, which will place the center of circulation over the Lesser Antilles either Monday night or Tuesday morning. The enhanced infrared animation reveals that we have persistent convection along the tropical wave axis, which is impressive considering how much dry air is being funneled in from the northeast to the southwest by the trade winds, and any time you have this much dry air out across the central Atlantic, it's usually unfavorable for any type of tropical activity. However, we still have a couple positive parameters for tropical cyclone development, the first being very warm sea surface temperatures. They are in excess of 28 to 29 degrees Celsius out ahead of the tropical wave, which is more than adequate for additional strengthening. And also, the westerly shear axis that is usually set up out across the eastern Caribbean is retrograding more so towards the west in tandem with this upper level low, which is also moving westward towards southern Florida. As we turn to the latest wind shear charts from the University of Wisconsin, we can see the tropical disturbance still located well out towards the east in the central Atlantic. And in terms of the westerly vertical wind shear, the strongest values are associated with the upper level low near the Bahamas, the wind shear values over Puerto Rico and Hispaniola are currently in excess of 40 to 50 knots, but all of this wind shear is moving westward towards southern Florida, and the westerlies are still much lighter out across the central Atlantic towards the Lesser Antilles. Now, as long as the tropical disturbance remains at a generally low latitude, that is also going to help the medium range development prospects as long as it stays to the south of the westerly shear axis. If anything, the storm has to move a little bit slower, though, because the easterly wind shear, mainly in the form of it moving towards the west at 20 miles per hour, is going to be a very significant inhibitor. Usually the systems need to slow down to maybe closer to 15 miles per hour for them to fully close off a surface circulation. Since the low is very weak at this time compared to stronger tropical cyclones, the main steering influence will be in the low to mid-levels of the atmosphere, and this is where the subtropical ridge along the Atlantic is most dominant. You can see very strong east to westerly flow out across the central Atlantic, which is going to help to push our system towards Hispaniola, and it's not going to be until the system reaches the central Caribbean or southwest Atlantic when it starts to slow down as it begins to round the western periphery of this subtropical ridge. The latest model spaghetti plots show a continued west to west northwest motion over the next three to four days. This really comes as no surprise since the low level ridge is not going to really move anywhere. So we are expecting the system to be somewhere near Hispaniola within the next 72 to 84 hours. And thereafter, that's when the forecast really starts to become more uncertain. If the system moves directly over the mountains of Hispaniola, those mountains could really help to tear up the system, which is going to be good news for the southeast United States. But if it moves a little bit towards the north, or especially a little bit more towards the south, which is perhaps a little bit more likely, then of course there will be a higher probability of the tropical low maintaining its surface identity as an area of low pressure and that would give it more of a chance in the medium range to persist as it hugs the coast of Cuba and eventually makes a turn more so towards the north either into the southeast gulf, far western Bahamas, or even southern Florida. As we take a look at one of the model depictions, this is going to be the 18Z run of the American GFS model and this is an overall look at the Atlantic Basin and the low level vorticity and you can see our tropical disturbance by itself here in the central Atlantic. And as we fast forward into the next 24 to 48 hours, you can see that there is the chance that this will strengthen into a tropical cyclone as it makes its way through the Lesser Antilles as we work our way into early Tuesday morning. Thereafter, it continues to move west-northwest, and at this time, the model has it moving directly over Hispaniola, and you will see soon thereafter that it really starts to lose that low-level vorticity due to land interaction. So that's going to be one of the main questions as to how much is left if in fact the center of circulation moves directly over the Greater Antilles. And this is a question that really cannot be answered at least this far out, but it will be a great factor here in terms of how much influence this system will have on the southeast United States. This early in the game, it's really too early to even think about what could happen after the tropical low bypasses Hispaniola. But one thing that the models are in fairly good agreement on is that as we take a look at the mid-level steering pattern, there will be a cutoff upper level low that develops over the Ohio and Tennessee Valley as we work our way into five days. You can see this upper level low cutting off from the main flow, and it starts to retrograde towards the southwest as we go into day six. You can see it here a little bit more as it moves towards the southwest into the lower Mississippi Valley. And as long as this upper level low is situated where it is on this model, this would help to steer any tropical cyclone moving out of the Caribbean more so towards the north 
perhaps either into southern Florida or the Carolinas by this time frame. However, it must be noted that the models often do struggle with forecasting upper level lows that get cut off from the primary westerly flow, so it's still a big question as to whether or not the models have the overall position of this upper level low correct five and six days out. But for the time being at least, the GFS and ECMWF models are in fairly good agreement with the forecasted steering pattern. This is the day five European model solution, and we have a very strong ridge over the central half of the nation, and it's helping to really dig this trough out across the Great Lakes. And as we go into day six, we see a very similar scenario with the upper level low cutting off here across the southeast. If anything, the European model is a little bit more so towards the east with this trough, which would induce more of a track up the east coast. So the bottom line notes is that even if we do not get a tropical storm within the next 48 hours, there is still a good probability of at least tropical storm force wind gusts associated with some of the stronger convection as this tropical wave moves across the eastern Caribbean and the Lesser Antilles Monday night and Tuesday morning. Therefore, residents in that area must be bracing for the threat of heavy rainfall in mountainous areas, along with the possibility of power outages if those tropical storm force winds can start to take down some of those power lines. So this is not going to be a major issue for the Eastern Caribbean, but this is still definitely something that you do not want to take lightly. So brace for tropical storm force conditions, and as far as the Southeast United States, it truly is just too far out to tell. It's still too early to make seven to eight day forecast cones because there's a lot of uncertainty beyond Hispaniola, and there's still that chance that it remains south of Hispaniola altogether, which is often a common theme for very weak tropical systems moving towards the west this quickly. So stick with the National Hurricane Center for official updates, and as always, we will be here at 28storms.com along with facebook.com slash 28storms with supplemental updates.